Um, in this video, I'm going to discuss about diffusion of ammonia and hydrogen chloride, the rate of their diffusion. Now, previously, I talked about gases being in continuous random motion like all states of matter and uh, I've been covering gas laws. So today, I want us to talk about the rate of diffusion of ammonia as compared to hydrogen chloride. Now, for gases to diffuse, when you talk about diffusion, we talk about movement of molecules or particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And diffusion depends on what we call the mass. The mass of a substance depends, the rate of diffusion of a substance depends on the mass of the substance. What does it mean? The heavier the molecule, the slower the rate of diffusion. The lighter the molecule, the faster the rate of diffusion. It means that heavier molecules take a very long time to diffuse, but lighter molecules take a very short time to diffuse. Now, gases are always in continuous random motion. So on my left hand side, I have a glass or cottonwood soaked or dipped in ammonia solution. So when the glass wool is soaked or dipped in ammonia solution, it means that ammonia gas will be coming out from this end. Now, on my right hand side, we've been told that a glass wool is soaked or um, a cotton wool soaked or dipped in hydrochloric acid. Now, any acid normally have a gas coming out. For example, in hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride gas is normally given out. Now, it means that when ammonia gas is given out, it will move in this direction. Similarly, when hydrogen chloride gas is given out, it will move in this direction. It means that they will meet at some particular point in this combustion tube. Now, when gases diffuse, they do so with respect to the molecular mass. So when you're given hydrogen to be equal to 1, chloride to be equal to 35.5, and nitrogen to be equal to 14.0, it means that I can calculate the molar mass of ammonia. So when I look at ammonia gas, what will be the molar mass? There is only one mole of nitrogen, 14, plus three moles of hydrogen, three times one. That will be 14 plus three, giving me 17 gram per mole, meaning one mole of ammonia measures 17 grams. Now, let's talk about hydrogen chloride gas, HCl gas. Hydrogen is only 1 plus chloride is 35.5. That one gives us a total of 36.5 gram per mole. It means that 1 mole of hydrogen chloride measures 36.5 gram. Now, when we compare this molecular mass and we compare it to this molecular mass, which one is heavier, or rather, which one is denser? HCl is heavier. It means that HCl will be moving very slowly as compared to ammonia. Ammonia will move very fast because the molecular mass is lesser. Therefore, it is very light in weight. It therefore means that it will move very fast. Now, during the process of reaction, when ammonia gas reacts with hydrogen chloride gas, a chemical reaction takes place to form what? Ammonium chloride. And ammonium chloride is a solid and its color is white. Dense white fumes. Or rather, it will form a ring or a disc. Now, ammonia moves faster than hydrogen chloride. It means that at some point in time in the combustion tube, they will meet. And to which point will they meet? They will meet closer to hydrogen chloride. 
this is where the disc will form. So, during the process of reaction, the white ring or disc will form at this point. White or uh, white ring stroke disc will form at that point. This one or this knowledge leads us to what we call Graham's law of diffusion. And what does Graham's law of diffusion entail? Now, Graham's law of diffusion states that the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the molecular mass, the square root of the molecular mass or the square root of the density. Now, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the molecular mass or the density. It means that if I had two gases C, A and B, the rate of diffusion of gas A all over, the rate of diffusion of gas B is equals to the square root. So if it is inverse proportionality, the, rate, the molecular mass of B starts all over the molecular mass of A. So this is the general formula of Graham's law of diffusion. Consequently, if we have such a formula, it means that the volume of the gases are different. We'll do an example in such a case. So whenever the volume of the two gases, A and B, are different, we use such a calculation. What if the volumes are the same? We use this calculation. The time of A all over time of B is equivalent to the square root of the molar mass of A all over square root of the molar mass of B. So in case of time, time is directly proportional to the molecular mass, while the rate is inversely proportional to the molecular mass. So I said that when we are using time, we have equal volume. When we are using rate, we have difference in volume. And how do I calculate rate? How do I get rate of any reaction or rate of diffusion of a gas? Now, rate is the movement of something with respect to time. In our case, we can talk about volume, the volume of a gas with respect to time. And the volume of a gas is normally given in cubic centimeters and the time is given in seconds. So what is the SI unit of rate? The SI unit will be cubic centimeters per second or somebody else will write cubic centimeter per second. So that is the formula for finding rate. Now you can pause the video and let me try to do an example of rate and time. Now, um, I have these two simple questions on the two formulas that we learned previously in the, in the previous lesson. And I said that Graham's law of diffusion states that the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the molecular mass, temperature, and pressure kept constant. Now, I gave two formulas. Now, let's look at this example one. It takes 30 seconds for a 100 cubic centimeter of carbon dioxide to diffuse through a porous plate. The first thing I would always advise students is to write down anything that we're given. Now, we have carbon four oxide gas. What are we given about carbon four oxide? Time. Time for carbon four oxide to diffuse is 30 seconds. How about volume? Volume of carbon four oxide is 100 cubic centimeter. What else can I get about carbon dioxide? The molecular mass. What is the molecular mass of carbon dioxide? Carbon is 1, 12 from this one, plus oxygen are 2, and one mole of oxygen is 16 grams, so it is 16 times 2. That one will give me 32 plus 12, which is 44 gram per mole. Now, 
How long will it take 150 cubic centimeter of nitrogen 4 oxide? Therefore, the next gas is nitrogen 4 oxide gas, and that is the formula of nitrogen 4 oxide. What do I need about nitrogen 4 oxide? I want its time. How long? How long with respect to time? What else am I given? The volume, and the volume is 150 cubic centimeter. How about the molar mass? I can calculate it. And notice the molar mass of nitrogen oxide. One mole of nitrogen, 14, plus oxygen is 16 times 2. Therefore, 14 plus 32, that one gives me 46. So, this one is 46 gram per mole. Now, when I have certain information, I gave us two formulas. One of the formula was with respect to time. Another formula was with respect to rate. Now, on the rate formula, I said that we only and only use the rate formula if and only if the volume are different. And in our case, the volumes are different. That is why we will use the rate formula. And let us just remind ourselves, what was the rate formula? We say that the rate of carbon 4 oxide divided by the rate of nitrogen 4 oxide is equivalent to the square root of the molar mass, sorry, is equivalent to the molar mass of nitrogen 4 oxide all over molar mass of carbon 4 oxide. We say they are inversely proportional. And when I say inversely proportional, if carbon dioxide is here, the molar mass will be here. If nitrogen dioxide is here, the molar mass will be will be there. Now let's calculate it. How do I get rate of carbon dioxide? Rate of carbon dioxide. I said it is very simple. Volume all over time. And what is the volume of carbon dioxide? A hundred. And what is the time of carbon dioxide? Thirty. So that will give me ten all over three. Now let me go calculate the rate of nitrogen dioxide. The rate of nitrogen dioxide is volume all over time. And what is the volume of carbon nitrogen dioxide? 150. And what is the time of nitrogen dioxide? It's actually what we want. Time. Now, let's go to the next thing. So, carbon dioxide is 10 all over 3. 10 all over 3. So, I... I feed it back in the equation divided by nitrate of nitrogen dioxide is 150 all over T is equal to the square root of and the square root of nitrogen 4 oxide is the molar mass of nitrogen dioxide is 46 divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44. So when I come here, it will just be simple from our primary knowledge. I multiply by the reciprocal. 1 over 150 is equal to the square root of 46 all over 44. Now, this will be uh, 10t all over. When we take 3 times 150, that one will give me... So when we take 3 times uh, 150, that will give me 450. And we, when we divide 46 and 44, that one will be 1.022. And when we find the square root, the answer will be 1.022. So we take 46 divided by 44, then you find the square root of the answer. So when I cross multiply, if I want t alone, I'll multiply both sides by 450 all over 10 by 450 all over 10. Therefore, t will be equal to 1.022 times 450 divided by 10. So when I punch that one in my calculator, it will be now 45.99, 45.99 seconds. Now, I hope now you can clearly understand how we can calculate time when you're given the rate of carbon dioxide and we can use the formula of rate to get the volume, not volume, but time of nitrogen so this is how simply we can handle that question. Let's go to number two. What are we asked? How long will it take 200 cubic centimeter of hydrogen chloride to diffuse through a porous plug if 
equal volume of carbon dioxide takes 200 seconds to diffuse through it. Now, how long will it take 200 cubic centimeter of HCl? So what am I given? HCl. The time for diffusion is, sorry, volume given is equals to 200 cubic centimeter. And then we are asked the time. How long will it take 200 cubic centimeter of HCl? What do I know about HCl again? Molar mass, I can click and click its molar mass. And in HCl, I can still use those values, whereby in bracket, hydrogen is normally equal to 1.0, chloride is normally equal to 35.0, and then uh, carbon is equal to 16.0. And oxygen, not 16, but uh, carbon is normally 12.0 and uh, oxygen is equals to 16.0. Now, HCl will now be 1 plus chloride is 35.5. So that one will give me clearly 36.5 gram per mole. So that is the molar mass of hydrogen chloride. What else am I given? Carbon 4 oxide. And in carbon 4 oxide, we are told that 200 seconds, meaning that will be the time, and we are given also something equal volume. Now, the volume of carbon dioxide will be similar to the volume of HCl, which is just 200 cubic centimeters. Now, if I have equal volumes of those two gases, and the time for carbon dioxide I'm given as 200 seconds i can calculate its molar mass and the molar mass of carbon dioxide carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 16 times 2 that will give me 44 32 plus 12 gives me 44 gram per mole now which formula do i use when we have equal volume these two volumes are equal i use the formula for time Therefore, the formula that I will use is time for HCl all over time for carbon four oxide is equal to the square root of the molar mass of HCl all over molar mass of carbon four oxide. Now, when you talk about time, they are directly proportional. When you talk about rate, they are inversely proportional. So let me feed back those values in my question. What was the time of HCl? It's what I actually needed. So I can just give it T all over. What is the time of carbon dioxide? 200 is equivalent to the molecular mass. Square root molar mass of HCl is 36.5 gram per mole and molar mass of carbon dioxide is 200. So when I fit this one in my calculator, I'll have T all over 200. You take 36.5, divide by 200, then you find the square root of the answer will be equivalent to 0 0.9108. 0 0.9108. So how do I get T? T will be equivalent to 200 times 0 0.9108. And in such a case, when you fit that in the calc, it will give us 182.16 182.16 seconds so that will be the time at which HCl will diffuse now there are very simple concepts I want us to understand here what was the molar mass of HCl 36.5 what was the molar mass of carbon dioxide 44 point, 44 grams now between HCl and carbon dioxide which one is heavier? Definitely it is carbon dioxide. And you can see it from the time that it will take a longer time for carbon dioxide to diffuse with respect to the time for HCl gas. Let's come back here. Let's look at carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. The molar mass is 44. The molar mass is 40, 46. Now the time will be almost the same. And that is why we can get 30 and 45. But again, it will take a longer time for nitrogen dioxide to diffuse with respect to 
carbon dioxide and that is why we have 45.99 seconds thank you very much that is all i had for gas laws let's meet in the next video for the mole concept bye don't forget to subscribe